So we have this new battery from this company. It's spelled D-E-Y-A is the name of the company. And I tried to look it up <laughs> to make sure I could pronounce it right. And um, every YouTube video I looked at it had it pronounced slightly differently. So I think I think the way it's it's pronounced in Chinese is doya, potentially. Uh, doya sounds like uh, what I heard was the most authentic. Um, and then I heard uh, dai was another pronunciation, which I don't think is right. Dai. Um, I don't, but, and then, uh, I like day, D D E Y E is how I've been saying it. So I'm probably going to stick with day for now. Um, but understand I at least tried <laughs> to come up with the right pronunciation. And if it's something, uh, else, then we will, um, we'll make that, uh, change, but, uh, we're going to do this, uh, open boxing here. These literally just showed up. I mean, they popped off the truck just a few minutes ago, uh, brand new. This is a, a five. 0.12 kilowatt hour, 48 volt nominal uh, battery. And so uh, we're going to be testing this out and checking it out. Uh, and so we'll see what we what we got in here. So just some straps along the top. And uh, one, one thing to note, a little different than the Midnight battery we were testing, is that just one box. So Midnight was shipped in two boxes. Right away, I can tell this is going to be just one box. So... All right, let's take a look at what we have first. So starting off, there is a product manual um, that looks to be in German. Okay, so I'm really curious. <laughs> is this actually going to be a German installation manual? Let's find out. Maybe there's an English version in here somewhere. So it's also got this um, in the same bag is this little green... Uh, Adapter, which you'd probably use for RS-232 or 445 uh, uh, adapter. So, uh, yeah, well, we're not sure exactly what that's for yet, but that's in the same bag as this manual. Battery der Furbenjasserby. All right, let's see. Is there, oh, there is English. There is English. Okay, cool. So, all right, so it starts off in German. And then, uh, okay, here we go. Page 26, Spring Series LFP battery. So, all right, we do have the manual. It is in English. That is nice. And it's in this bag that's um, not really reusable. But I think just to keep everything together, I'll put the the bag and this little guy back in there. And let's see what else we got. So we have, uh, looks like these are going to be some battery connectors. Uh unknown what's going to be in this bag and this looks like more more wires and cables and connectors and then uh some some sort of mounting brackets let's start with the wire so these are in you know nice bubble wrap and let's see so the first is a um jr45 connector and uh the pinout looks like just JR45. I'm not confident enough to make sure it is, but I think this is just regular Ethernet cable and not any sort of special pinout, but we'll have to find out. And then we have two uh, battery jumpers. So this would be for if you were wanting to connect one battery to the other uh, in parallel directly. This little jumpers would be it. And uh, they're so small, I can't really get a sense of the size of the wire. I believe this is four AWG, just from my guess, but uh, I can't see that written on it. And it's got, there's some tags on the, the wires too. I don't know what those tags are for. Um, and so that was everything that was in this bag. All right, so what's up next? Well, more cable, cool. All right. Oh, yeah, here we go. So we have, uh, looks like a grounding cable. So it's not, not super huge, but some sort of ground, ground cable. And then we have, uh, we have a cable. It's got one end has got this little plastic connector, which is going to be on the battery that we'll be able to plug in and lock in. And then on the other side, we have a, um, 22 dash 10, uh, uh little adapter so i think i want to say that's three eighths but i won't really know until 
we take a look. So uh, looking at the cable, it um, looks like it's a UR, so registered, and uh, 105 degrees Celsius, 1,000 volts, FT1 Rojas compliant, AWG4. All uh, right. So this is, yeah, AWG4. So we'll have to... Well, we, I just want to figure out, you know, how how much ampacity we can put through this. And I think a lot of it's going to have to do with the design of the system, depending on how you connect the battery to the um, the bus bar or inverter or whatever. But we want to see the we want to really look into the ampacity there of what that cable can handle. Here's the ground, and then here we have the bag. Put this all together. Okay, it's a couple more until we get to the battery. Oh, there's something else down here. Uh, all right, yeah, we have some brackets here. Let's take a look at these. Okay, so I think these are the wall mount brackets, I believe. I was looking through the manual earlier, and I, I think these are the brackets that you would use to mount the battery to the wall if you were so inclined, but... uh. I'm not 100% positive yet. Well, the more brackets in this box here. I can't see it. Uh, all right, so we have some sort of L brackets that um, I believe are going to go like this that would be used for uh, tray mounting. If we were to say have this in a a tray, I, th I think I believe it takes you know a standard 19-inch server rack uh, would would do it, but this will allow us to um, give the battery some additional support. I think that's what's for. And then there's a bag of screws, and these are clearly for. I'm I'm pretty sure these are for the wall mounting. If you were to go into a wall, you'd probably use those, and that's probably for server rack or some type of racking. All right, I think we just have one more bag here. Oh no, maybe, maybe there's a box. Ooh, <laughs> there's also a box. Wow, it's got a lot of cool stuff. Let's see what's in the box. Ooh, all right. Okay, yep, so this is, these are feet of some sort. So I am pretty sure that these are the feet that we will use to just stack the the battery uh, up. I think I'm, we got to you know read our directions and everything, but I'm pretty sure these will go on the corners, and this will be the brackets that we use to stack um, our batteries. So that's there, and then we have some screws that go in here, and that's what's in this box. All right, one more bag. Let's see what's in here. All right, we we have another cable. Interesting. All right, so we have uh, another communication cable. Uh, this one is gray. The other one's black. And let's see. Uh, yeah, it looks like standard pinout as well. So I'm I'm thinking it's a Cat Five E, the JR Forty Five connector, and this looks like standard Ethernet. So if they don't have, if there's no special wires that we need if we can just use regular ethernet cord for all of this i'm going to be super happy that'll be um that'll be really nice not to have to do any anything all right oh oh yeah so this thing's heavy <laughs> george you want to give me a hand uh getting this out uh let's see do we have a plan for how we might oh look at this come right out here and then, uh, do we have any handles or anything? Oh, there are. Oh, jeez. All right. Oh, there we are. All right. The box out. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Looking good. Yeah. All right, so you take the bag off, 
And um, let's put the battery down like this so everyone can see it. Oh, <laughs> we don't get our fingers caught. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, Zach, come take a, take a look at this. So this is um, the warranty void if seal broken is not sealing the, ba <laughs> the battery shut. So that's cool. So maybe we'll get a chance to go in there and see what's inside and still have a warranty. Uh, yeah, if we remember the, the midnight one was actually banded across the top so they know if you opened it or not. This one they put on the wrong way. Uh, so we have um, declaration of conformity, all of our specifications, 100 amp hour, 5.12 kilowatt hour, um, operating voltage 43.2 to 57.6. Huh. What's interesting, that is not the recommended charge voltage on this, um, right on the battery, which would have been nice. So we'll have to figure out the charging voltages that we want to use. All right, let's take a look at the front. We have uh, two positive or two negative terminals. Uh, they're covered with a little plastic thing. So just to show how these work, these are the special little plugs. We'll just pop them in and they're locked. So then if we had another battery here, we could just go negative, negative, and then uh, positive, positive. And now, how do we unlock them? I forget. <laughs> I haven't used these in a while. I think there's a squeeze or something. You just yank them. All right. So, yeah. So, there is a way to unlock them. Oh, yeah. There's a little pin there. Got it. Yeah. Oh, a little button. Nice. Okay. So, you just push the button in. All right. That's locked. That's locked. Well, what else do we have on the front here? So, we have, our, we have two positive and two negative. And then we have, there's a dry contact... Not really sure what that does, but um, this is our dry contact port, so we could then connect our pins in directly, whether it's like Modbus or CAN bus or something, some type of serial communication, I bet. But I bet I bet we could get some data out of there, so that would be something to think about how we could use that. And then we have the in and out, which I'm guessing is for if you were to connect the batteries together, you would probably go one to the other, so... If I was to go out here, I assume I would go into the in up here on this battery. And then uh, what do we have next to it? We have uh, the PCS, that's the power conversion system. So that's what we would connect. Probably, I'm guessing the gray one, this would connect to our inverter. And there's not a lot of uh, cable here. So again, I hope this is like off the shelf stuff because you may need to go, you know, a number of feet to the inverter depending. And uh, so we'll look through the manual. I believe we're only going to need one cable to the PCS, one to the, you know, one cable to the inverter. And I think we're going to go one to one uh, for the in and out for the communication. But we'll get there. We have four of these to test out. We have the on off switch, and then we have a breaker. What are we, 125 amp. I can't get in close enough to see more, much more there, but it looks like a two pole breaker. And then there's a ground right below it, a place to land a ground. And then we have uh, some some lights, which we don't know what they do yet because we haven't haven't tried it. So um, that's more or less the whole thing. Let's just turn it on and see what happens. Um, so I guess I'm going to put the breaker up, and then I'm going to turn Zart on. Let's see if our lights come on at least. Oh yeah. So it looks like maybe you know, it's three lights and it's got a blinking run. And I'm just going to take it right from these terminals here. 52.55 volts. All right. Cool. So, I mean, that's where we're at. I mean, how easy is that to get, you know, 52 volts right out of the battery? Obviously, we want to do some cycle testing on all these. We're gonna, we have a stack of four here uh, that we're gonna test out. We're gonna 
pile them up and then we're going to see um, capacity measurements and, and see how they all connect together. So that's the plan. But for now, uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>